السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we are going to continue whatever we have started in the previous uh, in the previous lecture now um, this is a recording of the second session where unfortunately the recording in MS Teams was was not found due to the glitch of uh, another student recording about the recording that they had done. And now, in the previous <coughs> in the previous lecture, we have talked about the the uh, the characteristics of uh, the material of concrete, the characteristics of the material of steel, and we discussed them in, ter in terms of tension, compression, shear durability and fire resistance and we have tackled in detail the meaning of in detail in detail the meaning of these things okay and then we left to talk about the different structural components and we said we have that base of structural components the regular framing of beams and columns slabs and coatings and then we have extra structural components that staircase shear wall which is mainly done to resist the lateral loading and whenever we talk about lateral loading we talk about horizontal loaded or horizontal loading like uh, wind and seismic and then we talked about the different structural elements and the different vertical structural elements and we have said we have examples of columns okay so this is acting like a column and then we have um, shear wall and then we have a combination of shear walls or whatever we call it as a core wall okay and a very good example of a core wall is being your um, being your lift and then we said that there are different structural arrangements that can be used here in Oman we have low and medium rise buildings and we said for low rise building let's say three stories and lesser then um, solid slabs or flat slabs can be used other structural systems can be used as well like waffle, uh, waffle slabs and uh, rubbed slabs wherever the client requires or whatever or wherever the situation requires for example we don't want intermediate columns and so but whenever we go more than three stories then we need to we, we need to incorporate um, shear walls or core walls um, to resist the lateral the lateral loading okay and then after that we talked about the different uh, different steps that we need to do for the structural design which is going to be the core of this lecture okay so normally before we start any structural design we start by developing the architectural and, art and structural drawings okay. if they are already developed then we'll go for the second step but normally we start from developing of the architectural and structural drawing and in you, if you can see here if you can see here we have a, we have an architectural plan here and then we have a 3d okay so this is what of, what we call it as 3d or perspective okay a 3D join or a perspective join. Okay, and you can see in this particular in this particular plan we have different elements. So we have columns, we have doors. So door is a secondary element, and then we have steps, and then we have as well if you can see we have windows and we have walls. Okay, now. Whenever whenever we have our drawing having the the different 
and secondary elements and this is going to be a an architectural drawing okay an architectural drawing now if you are seeing it from the top if you are seeing it from the top as it appears here then this is called always as a graph if you are seeing it from the angles then we call it as a we call it as um, a section okay or an elevation depending on the it's showing more details or it's from outside. If it's fully outside, then we call it an elevation. If you are cutting an inside portion, then we call it as a, as a section. And I'll explain further the meaning of section, uh, elevation, plan, perspective with a, with a, certain, uh, with a certain example. So if we go and see, Try to go and see the fundamentals of the drone. Okay. Now, this particular this particular chapter in my book talks about the different the different types of drawings that normally we deal with in construction. So if you see here, I have tried to classify if we have residential buildings and then we have residential commercial buildings. And in residential buildings normally we have architectural drawings, structural drawings, and then we have amenity drawings. Okay. Now if you go and see here, if you try to zoom in a little bit, you can see we have three samples here. Okay, we have three samples. Now, in sample number one, in sample number one, where we have the different secondary, secondary elements that we, put together, we have said. So you can see columns are not there. Now we have um, the samples for the um, for the toilet and bath. We have doors. We have walls. We have windows. Ventilation. So. This is whatever, this is whatever we refer, okay, or this is whatever we call it as an architectural, okay, an architectural, this is whatever we call it as an architectural drawing. Then after, we have another one here, which is having the columns, beams, slabs, and even we have whatever we call it, uh, hatches here. And we'll talk about the meaning of the hatches later. Anyhow, you can see here, only primary elements have been shown here. And this is representing your structural job. Okay. Now, when it comes to the third one, when it comes to the third one, you can see now, we expanded a little bit. We are not talking only about primary and secondary elements. No, we have exceeded that by talking about fans. Okay, exceeded that by talking about fans. Um, talking about uh, lights. So we have what do you call it? Uh, fans, lights. Okay, and other things like the TV connection. So these are these are the. Oh, this is the electrical. Or whatever we call it as amenity, and it can be further divided into different drawings as well. So we have mechanical, okay, mechanical and electrical, and then we have plumbing as well. Okay, and you can see here, okay, you can see that we have um, we have a sample of drawing, and you can see here. In this particular drawing, we don't have columns, we don't have beams and uh, what do you call it? We don't have beams and other things. What do we have? We have windows, we have uh, toilets and uh, samples and the other things. Okay, so you can see that this is an example. This is a clear example of art. 
application and so on. Okay, now going for going for the other one. Now this is a real example. This is a real example of a structural drawing. And you can see in this particular structural drawing we have we have columns, beams, slabs. We don't have the other secondary elements. Okay. So this is a this is a good example. Okay. This is a good example of a structural drawing. Okay, or a structural plan. Okay. And then we have we have the we have the MEPN. It's very clear or the electrical drawing. It's it's very clear you can go and see inside the electrical drawing that spines are there and the lights and balances. So this is an electrical drawing. Normally it's done by the electrical engine. And then we have plumbing. Okay, we have plumbing where the connection, we are talking about the connection of the water and wastewater. And that's why you can see here if you zoom if you zoom in, you can see manholes and actually standing for a manhole and bar. So the connection where uh, uh, what you call the wastewater will go from our uh, what you call toilets, kitchen and everything to the manholes. And for residential commercial, for residential commercial, they are going to be the same. The only thing. Okay, so you can see the architectural drawing here. Structural drawing. Electrical drawing. This is a commercial residential building. Okay. We have another one for drainage. Okay. Or plumbing as well, and then here, what do we have extra? We have a separate drawing for water. Okay, when we talk about water supply, we don't talk about waste water now. Okay, so when it goes to the municipality, municipality they will be asking you for two drawings only, they'll be asking you for the architectural and structural drawing, but the plumbing, the electrical, the water. And drawing and the other drawings you require them for the purpose of the construction whenever you need to construct your building the airport, then at that time at that time you require to have these drawings and I'll try to attach for you some example drawings where you can refer them back to the user okay and then we have um, fire drawing so whenever we are going for a uh, multi-story or whenever we are going for a residential commercial building then we need to go and do a fire drawing and that is going to be for the purpose of the approval from the public authority of civil defense okay they require the, uh, the fire drawings okay so architectural and structural will go to the municipality if it's a commercial residential or a high story building, then we need to do fire as well. Okay, and you can see some samples have been some samples have been shown here. Okay. So for example we have here uh, DS okay and we have EL okay, DS and EL where you can see them clearly here. We have ES and DS. Okay. So EL is standing for emergency light. If you can go and see here, okay. emergency light. Okay, emergency light. And this, okay, emergency light. And then the DS is standing for, for smoke detector. Okay, so all of these are related. All of these are related to um, fire protection, or they are considered to be fire, fire alarming or fire protection equipment. Okay. Now these are the basic drawings that normally we deal with when it comes to when it comes to uh, 
construction. Okay, these are some samples for the different types of drawings, which normally are going to be there in uh, in the in the drawing itself. And I'll, I'll uh, as I told you, I'll attach for you the samples of each and every drawing. Now, to understand the meaning of perspective section uh, elevation, I have brought for you. Let, let's say that I'm talking about an onion. Okay, or an orange, whether it's an onion or orange shape, it's an onion actually rather than an orange. Okay, so if you can see here, whatever you can see here now, it is a 3D. Okay, it is a 3D, um, it's a 3D view or a 3D picture. If it's a 3D, then we call it as a perspective. If it's a 3D, we call it as a perspective. And a very good example of perspective, as you can see here, where we are seeing our building from the, from not not only two direction, we are seeing it in terms of three D three direction. So we call this drawing, this type of a drawing, as perspective. And then if I'm seeing this onion, if I'm seeing this onion from the top, then we call it as a plan. Okay, we call it as a plan view. Okay. So this is an example of a plan view. Okay, this is an example of a plan view. If you are seeing this particular onion from the side, if you are seeing it from the side, then this is called as a section. Okay, or this is sorry, called as an elevation. If you are seeing it from outside, it's called it's called as an elevation. Okay, and this is an example of this is an example of elevation. An elevation is going to be a 2D, a 2D draw. Now, if you are cutting, if you are trying to cut your onion and to see the details from inside, we we'll call this one as a, a section view. We we'll call it as a section view. And you can see now, we cut we cut our building till the position we are seeing what's inside the building. So, if you are cutting to see more details, then we call this one to be a, we call this one to be a section, uh, a section drawing. Okay. Now this is related to explaining the basics of the basics of drawings. Now you shouldn't have any issue in terms of um, in terms of uh, understanding the different drawings. Now if you go and see here, we have said that this is going to be an architectural drawing because of the availability of secondary elements. Now if you go and see here, we have um, we have a plan view as well because we are seeing it from the top. Okay, vertically, whether from the top or bottom. Anyhow, we are seeing it uh, vertically. So now you can see that we are having slab. So this is my slab, and then we have beams, we have columns. So in this case, there are no steps, there are no windows, there are no doors. Okay, so this is only having the primary elements. So we are talking here about the structural. Plan. And then after that, after that we are going to talk, after we learn the difference between architectural drawing and structural drawing, the next step is to go and talk about um, how to position columns, okay. how to position columns. And you can see here, um, this is one, one method of doing the columns, okay. uh, some guidelines are there, where it says for you that you need to do the columns first for the outer support, outer corners. So we have first outer corner, second outer corner, third one, fourth one, fifth. Now after you finish your outer corners, you will go to your inner corners. Okay. After that, you need to decide if the distance, for example, if this distance is more than the limit. That limit is going to go according to the structural system that you are using. So if we are using a solid slab system, then there will be a, a what you call uh, an economical range. If you are using a flat slab system, another range. If you are using a waffle uh, slab, another uh, another range. Normally you can go to five, six meters, six to seven meters for a solid slab. So it says for you, if if this is going to go more than six to seven meters. Then you need to place some intermediate columns. 
okay but if we have a scenario where we have for example a window so this is my window okay and we have a what you call a huge window of 8 meters then we cannot input a column inside so even if it's more than 7 meters we need to put a column on, on the first or the beginning of the window and then another one outside on the inside now another thing to be taken into account for the positioning of the columns now this 6 to 7 meter is fine when you go for when you go for a straight okay, a straight element but whenever we talk about a curved element okay, when we talk about a curved element then this 6 7 meter is too much to go for okay so normally there is no specific value uh, for a curve but you can go for let's say almost half of whatever is available for uh, whatever is available for the straight line, even one third of it, okay, just to be safer. Okay. It means that if I have, if this was a very lengthy curve, then we might be having another column to go here. Okay. Now, okay. Now, if we can see here, okay. Now, what we are trying to do, we are trying to come up with a structural plan. Okay, we are trying to come up with a structural plan. Now, we can see that this is. This is an architectural drawing, but without the presence of the columns. Okay. This is another. This is another structure. This is another architectural plan because it contains uh, secondary elements like the what you call like windows, windows steps, and the other things. So this is another architectural drawing, but with the positions of the columns. Okay, with the positions of the columns. So. Let us try to let us try to what you call let us try to move these so we can start working on the position of the columns. Okay, now what we can do here for, to try to do the positioning of columns. First let me try to draw the beams. Okay, and whenever there is a wall there will be there will be a beam. Okay, so we have here this is the first this is the first beam. Since a wall is there, and then we have here another one, and then we have here another one, and then we have here another one, and we have here, and then we have here. So now, what do we have else? We have uh, a wall here, and eventually we have another wall. So what do we have now? We have areas which are enclosed, surrounded by beams. So each area surrounded by beams, we can call it as a slab. But this is now slab number one. This is slab number two, and this is going to be slab number. Slab number three. Okay. Now, after you specify the beams on the slabs, okay, you can go and do your columns, or you can draw a grid. So we go to the to the matter of the grid. As well. So here, what I can do, I can specify that this is a, a position of a column. This is a position of a column because it's a corner. This is another position of a column because it's a corner this is another position of a column because it's a corner another position of a column because it's a corner here it is a corner so that's another column here another corner so we have a column now we need to evaluate the remaining the remaining position Okay, we need to evaluate the remaining position. Now, if you can see here, 
the distance from this column to this column is 5.5 meter. Okay. Now for 5.5 meter, actually you don't you don't require to go and put an intermediate column. So I don't need to go and put in this particular location. I don't need to go and put a column in this particular location. Okay. I don't need to go and put a column. What about this? What about this particular bit? Now once again the distance for this bit, for this beam is four meter according to whatever has been given. Okay, so this one is four meter. Okay, so it means that I don't need to put a column here. And the distance for this particular beam the distance for this particular B, let us call this one to be B1, this is B2, and then this one is B2. So if you can see B1 is 4 meter, this B1 is 4 meter, B2 is 2.75, and then B3 is 5.5. So for a 5.5, I don't require, I don't require to have a column. For 4, I don't require to have a column, and then for 2.75, I don't require to have, a, to have a column. So, in this scenario, what happens? In this three dots, wherever we are talking about this as number one, for example, this is number two, and this is number three, you can see that the, the, uh, the beam will be carried by another. So, for beam number three, this is beam number three. So beam number three is going to carry beam number two. So this is beam number three and this is beam number two. Okay. And if I try to draw the three body diagram of this shape, you can see that this is my beam number three and beam number two is acting as a point of light. Okay. The same thing for beam number two. Okay, or beam number one and beam number two. You can see the other side. Here we have beam one. And these are connected. So we have beam three, beam two, and then beam one. You can see once again that uh, beam one is carrying beam two. Okay, so this is B3. You can see B3 is supported now by one column here. And another column. So we have one column as a support, we have another column as a support, and then we have point load of B2. Okay. Now if we go for B1, so this is my B1. Once again, there is a point load from B number two, which is this point, and there is one column here. That is representing this column, and then the other side where we, we are talking about this point now, it's not a column, but it's going to be a beam as well. Okay. Okay. So whatever we have tried to, whatever we have tried to illustrate, that is to give the extra, the extra full time. So whatever we have decided, whatever we have decided, we decided to keep the columns as you can see now in the structural, as you can see in the structural plan here, where we ended up having a column here, another column, another column, another column, column, and a column for these three positions or four positions. We had them as being carried by being carried by another beam. Okay. Okay, and what you can see here, what you can see here, 
that this is once again the architectural plan and this is representing a, an architectural um, section okay an architectural section where here we talk about ng that is referring to natural ground level and here it's a regular level okay. and this is what we call it as finish level finishing level okay. or the ground level and this is a, a, a roof we call or some of them their first floor first floor level okay now if you can see here the difference between this drawing where you can see secondary elements are present like roof windows doors uh, walls on the other hand here you can see that this is something different where we talk about um, where we talk about structural uh, sections for the structural sections what you can see okay, for a structural section what you can see you can see that we have columns beams foundation you can see minus two refers to that is two meter below the ground so you can see it's two meter below below the ground okay and this is this is what we refer to our structural section so we have structural section and structural plan and then here we have a structural section okay now if you go and see in this particular drawing you can see that the section has been taken the section has been taken from here that's section number a so what you can see you will see that this is the first door this is the second door and you need to be careful about the direction of the section okay so i can see the first door which is here you can see the second door which is here between them there is a wall that's whatever you are seeing here okay and then here you can see that it's an empty place which is a building okay Now, um, these are going to be examples for you. These are going to be examples for you where you need to try to do the current position. The only, the only thing that I would tell you, or I'll give you a hint for, is terrace. Terrace is another example for, or another terminology for balcony. Okay, another terminology for balcony. So you need to be careful about placing columns for the balcony since balcony is a cantilever portion. It will be supported only in one side, so that's why you need to be careful. Like for example, in this particular, this particular position, if I try to, if I try to go and zoom, it's not as possible to zoom. Anyhow, I would place, I would have placed, for example, my card to be here, and then another from here. So this cantilever now, this slab is going to be carried out by one beam here so by one beam connecting the two columns so a beam here this is going to be my beam okay a beam and then the the cantilever slab is carried by, by carried out by the beam the beam is transferring the load to the to this particular column okay another example for you to do okay and if you have any doubt if you have anything then at that time you can clarify so you can see that this is a ground floor and then we have first floor and then we have roof so ground floor first floor and then roof level after we know our, after we finish learning about the different types of drawings the second step is to go and to go and uh, to, to know the concept of idealization where we are trying to draw the free body diagram of that. So for example, we can see that we are, we are having a beam which is supported, let's say, by a column. This is how it looks like, uh, let's say, uh, if we are seeing it as a 3D. Okay. You can see that this can look this way. And it can be supported on the other side as well. Okay. Now, 
for me, when I go and start the analysis part, I don't need to go and draw it in this way because this is a complicated way for me to start analyzing. Okay, so what we do normally, we'll take this beam and try to draw an, a line instead. And then this particular support, we used to draw it as a vertical support, this one as a vertical support. So whatever I have done here, whatever I have done here, I have done the idealization where we are trying to draw the free body diagram so it will be easier for me later on to start the analysis. Okay. And this is and this is what's done with the bridge. Okay, so what has happened here with the bridge? We placed one support here, another support here, and supports here. That's why you can see that this has been transferred in this manner. While this is a slab which is not ready, we don't need to go and draw it. What I need to know is that this is a support, this is another support. So I can draw it in this form. That's the support, but this is the same support. And this is what we use to do. Okay, now if you go and see here, if you go and see for the third example, now instead of having simple support, since they are not connected, okay, since they are not connected to the other, to the other side, since they are not connected, we call it as an uncontinued support. Here, this is, this portion is connected. Okay, it's connected to something else. So that's, that's why they have kept uh, as a fixed, as a fixed support. Okay, let me just try to delete these so you can see the other example. Okay, so now here, once again, you can see the, the 3D frame. I need to go and transfer it to a 2D. It can be seen from this side, or that side, or the third side, or the fourth side. Okay, where I can see as a as a frame with support. The same thing with the truss. Okay, rather than drawing it in a 3D, we just idealize it in something like a 2D. And idealization shows the loading as well. Okay, idealization shows the loading as well. Okay. Now the next slide where we talk about the different types of support, and this is very important. Okay, this is very important. Now, if we can go and see here, we have um, a roller support, a hinge support, and a fixed support. What do you know, what you have studied, I mean, this is having a vertical reaction. This is having vertical and horizontal reaction. This is having vertical, horizontal, and moment. Now, these, mm, these things are important. Whatever is more important, whatever is more important, but you need to understand them their behavior okay you need to understand their behavior and when it comes to roller we normally see it in the form of our uh, in the form of a support for bridges okay if you can go and zoom here okay if you go here you will see that this looks like a roller where it absorbs the car weight when you pass on uh, a bridge okay now for the hinge Hinge it will support me in two sides. Okay, it will support me in two sides, and a very good example of a hinge is the door. Now you can see your doors in your your uh, houses are having some steel, uh, what you call it, connections here. Now you can see because of the steel connection, you can only you can only rotate. I can open and close. Means I can rotate my I can rotate my door on it, but I cannot take it up and down. If I cannot take the door up and down, it means that there is a vertical restraint, there is a vertical support stopping me from going up and down. Okay, and I cannot pull it left and right. The only thing I can only rotate it. If you cannot pull it left and right, it means that this hinge is acting as a restraint where it does not allow me to move in the horizontal direction as well. So it's the hinge is providing a vertical reaction, a vertical restraint, and then it's providing a horizontal restraint where I cannot move vertically or horizontally. I can only move in the direction of the, the direction of rotation or direction of, of movement. 
for the fixed support you can see that it will not allow you to do all of these okay it will not allow you to move in the vertical direction uh, neither the vertical direction nor uh, the horizontal or even to rotate okay uh, what what we need when it comes to structural design mainly especially when when we come to we talk about buildings that we rather than talking about roller hinge and uh, fixed support we talk about continuous and non-continuous support okay we talk about continuous and then non continuous support which will be discussed okay, which will be discussed in the further further classes but just to be sorry just to give you a highlight now whenever 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 we are having I have one situation where this is my support I have another situation where this is my support so I have situation one I have situation two now you can see this element this element okay let's say element one and then we have here element two okay now you can see element one is ending up with this part of my support okay so this support or this element is not going to continue means it does not to connect it does not need to connect to another another element if it requires to connect to other elements then there will be some moment okay moment means connection if there is any connectivity with other members then there should be a value of that if there is no connectivity then what does it mean it means that the value of moment in this position is equal to is equal to zero because it's not connected okay now when it comes to here you can see that this support but we have elements to be connected to the other elements so what we need to provide we need to provide certain moment okay we need to go and provide certain moment and moment is going to ensure that these two are connected to each other so what i need to do i just draw a small dotted line here and then have the have the what's it called the parabola and then we are going to explain further about this one since i didn't teach it to you in the class i'll not go deep about it right now and we are going to go deep about it in the upcoming upcoming lecture now the last two slides and then we'll end up our uh, our lecture okay so we are going to learn how to do the idealization now taking into account loadings as well okay. not only the three body diagram for the uh, for the elements okay now if we try to take if we try to go and take example number one okay what do we have we have three elements okay we have beam a b so this is going to be beam a b okay so what we can see here we have three elements of okay, whatever we have seen. We have element AB. We have have beam AB. This beam AB is supported by a hinge here, is supported by a ruler here. Okay. And then you can see above beam AB there is one beam which is cross beam. So in this position. 
and it acts as a point load because it's available only at that part of the application. And then once again, another cross beam in this location, which acts as a point. Now, assuming that, assuming that this is 300 kilogram, okay, assuming that this is 300 kilogram, which equals to 0.3 kilometer, okay, which equals to um, uh, point, uh, then point three is going to be three kilonewton. Okay, so three kilonewton. So this one is going to be half of the three kilonewton, one point five, and this is going to be half of the three, which is one five. Okay, why we didn't draw the container? We didn't draw it because container is not directly in contact with beam AB that we are drawing the three body diagram to. It's in contact with the cross beam. Now the second one, we are trying to draw now for the cross beam. So this is my cross beam. Cross beams are supported by one beam here and beam AB here. So we draw, or we drew the the support. After that, we have we have a container. This container is starting from this particular position to this particular position. It's not available in this position. It's not available in that position. So this is how we are going to draw our um, idealization for this particular for this particular element. Now going to going to the example of going to go to the example of um, the, the water tank that they have given into soil okay now if you go and see okay, if you go and see what happens here we have three elements so we have element number one that's the first one then we have element number two, that's the second wood. And then we have the base. So wall one, wall two, and then we make the base. Now, how the load is acting, how the load is acting here. Uh, the water is acting on the base to be a uniform. To be a uniform value, okay, it's all it's uniform all over the tank. It's uniform all over the tank. Now, when it comes to this wood, you can see or you can notice you have already went to uh, what you call water tanks, and you have seen swimming pools, even the, what you call the, the sea itself. You can see that the pressure. The pressure outside is going to be zero. Whenever, whenever you increase or whenever you sit inside, or you go inside the water, you can see that the pressure is going to increase. Okay, the pressure keeps on increasing. Okay, the same thing for the other side. It's zero, and then it keeps on increasing. Okay. So if I try to draw the free body diagram for this then it's going to be it's going to be a UVF it's going to be a UVF which is going to be representing the pressure of the pressure of water now um, at the end of the session at the end of the session I'll try to resolve my concern with using the values for you Okay, last slide, if you can see here, what we have, we have a different types of loadings, okay, we have different types of loadings, now, if you can see here, we have one beam, okay. so this is my first beam, this beam is having another beam on it, which is this one, okay, so we have two beams, now if you see what happens here, okay, this beam is 
is supported by a column. Okay. And then on the other side, it, it's not that clear. Okay, but anyhow, it will be supported by something else. So if we try to draw this particular uh, zoom section, we are trying. So this is a uh, this is a beam. We have a column is here. There will be another support here. Okay, and the smaller beam is acting on the is acting on the bigger beam. Okay, so you can see the bigger beam. This is a bigger beam. Is taking or carrying out the smaller one. Okay, they are interacting only in one point. If they are interacting only in one point, we call it as a, a point link. Now, when it comes to when it comes to the second picture, okay, when it comes to the second picture, you can see that we have a beam. This beam is supported by a column, supported by a column on this side, and then we have a UDL which is representing the blocks. So UDL, and then on this side. You can see that the UDL is bigger because the blocks are bigger. Okay. And then smaller. And then once again, something or some things which are big. The intensity is big. Okay. Now, whatever we call this one, we call it when it comes to structural analysis or when it comes to design we call it as a line load rather than UDL because UDL can be in terms of a uh, line or it can be it can be linear or it can be a planner or in an area okay, linear line planner area okay now you can see here as well in this in this scenario you can see that the tiles okay the tiles are available all over so they are UDL in nature Okay, they are UDL in nature, but we call it as an area load. Okay, because they are available or they are loading, loading a certain area, not a certain line. Okay, like whatever we had it in picture number two. For picture number three, or picture the last picture, you can see that this is my this is my retaining wall, and you can see that the soil. Is available or starting from here we have the pressure is zero wherever we go inside little bit we see that the pressure the pressure is going to be more but unfortunately what happened the pressure is actually the soil is pushing the wall to this side so you can see that your your pressure diagram is going to be of this size of this shape where it's going to be smaller here smaller smaller and it gets bigger Elements. Okay, so this is how uh, this is how the what you call uh, this is how the the idealization. Okay, this is how the idealization is going on. So this is how the idealization is going on. The only thing that I have explained it in the last class, uh, the last thing was to talk about. Uh, the concept of uh, the concept of uh, area load and line load and the other things. So I'll just explain it here, and then at the end of the session. Now, if we see here, if we are assuming that we have a slab, if I'm assuming that they have a slab, okay, I'll choose having four meter. And then five meter here, and then we have a beam. We have another beam. A third beam, a fourth beam, and then we have columns here. Okay. Now, if I try to extract the elements here, what do we have? We have three elements. Okay. So the first element is going to be a slab. Here, the slab is four meter, five meter. Okay. Forgive me for my typewriter. So I'm just writing on my on my tablet. Then we 
have a beam. So let's take let's take for example this beam. So this beam number one. So beam number one is having a L length of five meter. And then finally we are going to take for example this one. And let's say this one. So this one we are taking column. Now, if we can see, for the slab, we know the dimension is 4 into 5. For the beam, we know that the length is 5 meter. For the column, we don't have any uh, any data on how much is our, on how much is our uh, dimensions. So normally, what do we have? We have width, depth, and length. Or whatever we call it, or whatever we call it as height. Okay. Now, if we go to the example of the slab, you will see that we have things which are called known dimension, and then we have unknown. Okay. So when it comes for the slab, the known, we have the width. And we have the length. Okay, so we have the width as 4 meter, we have the length as 5 meter. The only unknown, the only unknown is the depth. Okay. Now, when it comes to the beam, the known dimensions are length only, where the length is 5 meter. We don't know how much is the depth of the beam. The width of the beam. So the unknowns, the unknowns are the depth and the width. For the column, we don't know. Actually, we don't know. The known is none. We don't have anything. And then the unknown, we have the depth. Now, if you see my unit of loading, my unit of loading for anything, we use here, we use metric and the unit of loading is kilonewton. Okay, so we have kilonewton. And if you can see, for this lab, when it comes to loading, I can, or for any element, I can load the element on known dimensions okay i can load my element according to the known dimensions i cannot divide it by something which is unknown so when it comes to when it comes to slab i can divide my uh, what do you call it i can divide my load into the known dimensions which are the length and the width so i can say that i'm going to divide it into meter for the width meter for the length so it's going to be kilonewton per meter square so always when it comes to loading in terms of slab you will see that it's a unit of force divided by an area because this area is known for me the value of the area or the dimension of that area is known for me so i can go and divide can go and divide my loading. Now, when it comes, when it comes to when it comes to the beam, once again the unit of loading is kilonewton. But here now, I have only one dimension which is known, so it's going to be meter. Okay, it's going to be meter. So that's why always when it comes to the the unit of loading is going to be kilonewton per meter, because we don't have uh, other dimension except only for the the length. Okay. The same thing, the same thing for the column. Unit of loading is kilonewton, but we cannot divide it by anything because we don't have anything which is known for us till now. Okay. So if you summarize whatever we have talked about, if you summarize whatever we have talked about, you will see that for a slab, for a slab, because it's an area, it's an area element. It's a it's an element which is represented by an area 
the loading is going to be divided by an area and we call it as an area load it's a it's a load which goes and to be distributed among an area while for a beam when we talk about a beam our loading is now divided into a line a certain line okay it's not an area it is only one line one dimension of the beam so that's why we call it as a uh, we call it as a, a line load so this is represented uh, a line load and this is represented an area load for the last one for the last one for the current uh, we don't know anything so i cannot divide it i cannot divide it to an area i cannot divide it to a line so i just call it as a point load because the unit is kilonewton here my load is divided by a line that's why we call it kilonewton per unit here my loading is divided by an area that's why we call it kilonewton per meter square the last thing to be highlighted is how to calculate the the self weight now we know the unit weight of concrete is 24 kilonewton per meter cube now for me this 24 kilonewton per meter cube it should be of the same unit of the of the element so the final unit of this slab the final unit of loading for the slab it should be in kilonewton per meter square so now to convert from kilonewton per meter cube to kilonewton per meter square, I need to multiply by only one dimension, okay, which is represented by the unknown number. So if I go and do the self weight calculation, then it's 24 kilonewton per meter cube multiplied by one dimension, which is the unknown, which will give you uh, kilonewton per meter square which is the same unit of whatever we have done here for the for the beam self weight is equal to 24 kilonewton per meter cube and then now my unit of loading for the beam is kilonewton per meter it means that i need to multiply the kilonewton per meter cube into two dimensions those two dimensions are the unknowns so I need to multiply it by meter for the depth, meter for the width, and eventually what do we have? We have kilonewton per meter. And this one is exactly whatever we have. So when we talk about calculation of the calculation of uh, self weights for the elements, okay, we just multiply it by the unknown dimensions. So when it comes to when it comes to color kilonewton per meter cube I need to multiply it by three dimensions in order to reach the kilonewton so it's 24 multiplied by meter for depth by meter for width by meter for length and this is going to give me finally kilonewton and this kilonewton is exactly whatever we have it here now, to keep it short to keep it short loading can be divided only to a known dimension so for a slab it's an area so i'll divide my load into an area that's why it's kilonewton per meter square beam beam is a line element it is coming only on the line it's not an area element okay so i can divide only my load into one dimension that is the line so that's why it's kilonewton per meter and we call it as a line load column i don't know anything Okay, and column is a small portion here. It's not, it's not a line. It's not an area. So it's considered to be a point load. So it's going to be a kilometer. To calculate the self weight, I need to multiply it by the unknowns. Okay. Just to clarify this point, okay, just to clarify this point, whatever we can do, uh, we can take the example of the example of papers. So I have one paper, one A4 paper, and I have 500 A4 papers. One, one and then 500. Now both of them are having the same, the same width. Okay, both of them are having the same width and the same length. The length of the paper is the same length of the 500 papers. Okay, the width of the paper is the same. 
the width of when a paper or paper is the same it will not change whether you are talking about 500 papers or 500 papers or a single paper but what will be different the difference will come in the thickness the thickness of one paper is small the thickness of the 500 papers are going to be more or the depth thickness of the okay. now to know the self weight or to know the weight of the element i need to multiply by the thickness okay i need to multiply by the thickness because width and length are the same okay they don't matter so i cannot say the weight of one paper is the same as the weight of 500 paper. so to differentiate i need to multiply by the by the depth or uh, the thickness of that particular uh, that particular element hopefully that's clear for you um, this is going to be the last time for me recording the lecture hopefully i hope that uh, you not have any issue in terms of recording once again um, thank you very much for listening and see you in the upcoming upcoming lectures